Hello, my name is Mrs. Moore. This is the Web Development and Programming course at the ACE Center at Hermitage. And today we are going over list sequence and iteration. Alrighty, as we were talking about before, um, our learning intentions today, we're going to iterate through a list using for within. Um, you'll also create a looping operation using range method. Uh, we'll demonstrate the use of lists. Um, methods using dot extend, reverse, and sort, and we'll also convert between lists and strings using the split method. Okay. <clears throat> Later on, we'll get to the family circle. Um, alrighty, so you're wise, of course. Why are you doing this? Why are we learning this today? We're learning this so we can not only um, create automated Python applications that allow us to um, split utilize range and I'm sorry one of my students was calling me <laughs> yes that's fine he is working on an Arduino project um, which a couple of my kids are out excuse me um, on internships but the reason why we're learning this today is because you want to be able to automate projects and create different programs using Python that's why we're in this class and at the end of the day how do we know we learn this is because you are going to create a project um, called Poem Remix, and also um, we'll have a little assessment at the end as well. So, prior to our guest joining us, uh, Daniel, you are going to go up to the board, and we had a task um, from one of our labs. Task one was to use range and x as the variable, and then be able to print out the range from zero to six. Now, after Daniel completes this, Omar, you are task two, and you're going to multiply the numbers one through seven. <clears throat> and then we have Mr. Rideout. You will do range and using the stop. All right, Daniel, if you can explain what you did for this section. All right, so... Very good, simple enough. Um, so if you look at the board, I hope everybody's screen looks the same. In Daniel's example, he used the X variable and set that equal to six. Using a for loop and number as the iterator, he looped through um, the X variable and you see that that's the uh, parameters for range. And then using the number iterator, he added one to each one of the numbers. Because if he didn't do that, what would have been the output? If you didn't put plus or equal to one, what would have been the output, Daniel? Zero through seven. Zero through seven. I mean, zero through five. So you wouldn't have had the range in which is designated. So in this example, while you're writing, we are using range start and stop. Um, and then you're going to append the number five to 15 um, to the list. The variable name is five underscore 15. Right out, were you able to complete this one? Oh, yeah, I already have it all completed. Okay. Very good. Omar? All righty. This is task two. Yep. Okay, am I doing like one of these in task two? So. Mr. Cameron is going to do the entire task two. Okay. You're going to go, since he decided to take your spot, you'll just go ahead and do task three. Task Print three. numbers 10 through 20 by two. So you're going to do the start, stop. Okay. And step. Okay. And step. Yes. All right, Mr. Cameron, you have your list, or you've created your variable with an empty um, sh list, five underscore 15. And let's tell me what you're doing now. Um, I'm adding 15 with the thing. Okay. All 
All right, can I pause you for one second? All righty, so I see where you're just taking your variable and then adding dot append with the um, parameters of five and then 15, but you can actually do this utilizing a for loop. Well, you want an iterator because you want to deposit or you want to loop through. If you had that uh, variable set to an actual string value, then it will loop through that list. But now that it's empty, you're going to create this, ver this um, for loop so it can deposit anything that you're appending. It's going to add to the end of this list. And since it's empty, it's just going to add those numbers like you're asking. Okay? So four, and now we need yes. So y the used is x, correct. So 4x, and we're going to use our range method. So 4x. So your parameters will be what? 5 through not 15, but oh, 5, five and 16. 5 and 16, correct. Our first line of our for loop says 4x in range 5 start 15, I mean 16 as your stop, correct? So now, being that we're only appending to the 5 through um, 15 into that empty list, what you're going to do is just utilize your variable name, that's what you have, 5 underscore 15, dot append method, and then your parameters are going to be what? What are you using as your iterator to go through each? Mm -mm. What are you using as your iterator that's jumping through this um, list? X, very good. So as opposed to appending five, we're going to put append. All righty, so what's next? That's correct. And now we're just going to print the output. Good to go. Thank you. All right, Mr. Omar, what are you doing today, darling? Uh, I have to uh, print numbers 10 to 20 by using twos. So, uh, Okay. <laughs> All right, and then Mr. Rideout, you're going to have the program list of letters, okay? Talk to me on what you're doing, Mr. Omar. So I'm declaring the variable numbers and having an empty like, thing. And then to 20, I'm going to start at 10 and end at 21 because the last one is included. Correct. So, and then I have to, oh, that's wrong. And I have to count by twos, so that's my step. Now remember, when you're utilizing range, you just need use the comma. Oh. Mm -hmm. pause for a second. You've already initialized uh, your variable numbers as an empty list, right? So you can't use the same thing as your iterator. I can make this number. You can, yes. Either or. 
perfect. Yeah, that should work correct. Yep. And then as it iterates through each one of the numbers, you're going to print your actual arbitrary variable name, which is numbers. Perfect. Good to go. Um, I'm basically just making a website. Someone reached out to our class saying that they uh, want a website for uh, kids that want to play golf and sort of learn the history. So right now I'm just doing a little bit of research and I have some photos. And this is what I have so far for the website. And uh, still got a little ways to go, but we're going to get there. So basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to make the LED dimmer. So this is something called a Raspberry Pi. And basically it's a microcomputer that you can use to code um, really basic things. And it really helps you understand computers. And thanks to the A Center, I'm able to um, actually get a lot of things. I can really learn a lot of different things here. So what I'm trying to make is, um, so this is something called a RGB LED. And what I'm trying to do is use these um, dialogues to control the different colors on it. So um, using different data from the, from the, R, uh, from the Raspberry Pi, and I'm coding uh, a value system so that whenever I twist it a certain amount, a certain amount of current flows through, and therefore it changes the color of the LED um, depending on which um, input knot I give it um, power into. And so currently I'm working on that, and um, it's really useful, uh, really, it's really fun. I've been using this tiny little book here, and I get it from a lot of parts, and it really helps me understand computers, so. Yeah. Okay, so I'm declaring the variable spell underscore list. Daniel, you also have to fix the error, okay? <coughs> I'll just uh, abbreviate this since I'm running out of space. February. Hmm. November. Um. Annual calendar and solstice. Now, don't forget your variable needs to be assigned to this string. I mean, this list. Mm -hmm. There's no assignment. third word in spell list. So I'm going to make, you know, like, what's a print? Just a print. Spell list. And then this start stuff and step. Which now, can we use, can we make this a little more efficient by using a for loop? Yes, we can. We always can. Of course we can. <laughs> Yay. Um, and then we're also going to utilize, utilize, excuse me, the lint function. Okay? So let's get that um, for loop going. So start it off. I'm 
the range method. It Wait, is. We wouldn't, right? No, we would. Okay, okay. For where it's in range, and yep. then the range is going to be, we start at first, so zero. Correct. And then every third. So this can be, oh wait, this can be, does it have to be semicolons or can it be commas? Comma. Commas, right. And then. So we're going to use the lin function. Oh, shoot. That's okay. My new, uh, so we're going to go through the length of spell list. So this, and this, using this function, this is a built-in function within Python. Uh -huh. You can sort through the range of the whole list of content, just using lin, as opposed to knowing the starting and stopping point, okay? Yeah. So if you had, um, say, 50 words on there, okay? You had a, a function or a program that you created, and you, it sort through 50 to 1,000 words. You don't want to say, hey, let me count through and see actually how many items are within this list. You want to utilize the function lin, so we can sort through this entire list, and then you want a, a step counter. So how many steps do we want? We want every third step, right? Mm -hmm. So your starting point is zero, because you're starting at the beginning. Then you're gonna use lin, okay? And what are the parameters of lin? When we be on? It's spell list, correct? Spell list, very good. So we want the entire list um, and this of counts, this variable. This counts whatever's in here without me having to manually count. Exactly. Okay. All righty. Okay. And now we need a step. A step uh, is every third. Every third, right? every third yes. So, so it's going to start at the beginning. It's going to incorporate the, the first um, item in your list. And then it's going to count every third item. And that's what you're going to be your output once you complete your, your loop. OK. And then that's my four, four loop. Mm -hmm. And now I write down what it prints. And it prints. For words in the range. So now what are we going to print? What's our ultimate goal? We want to print the words. Yeah, so that's going to be your argument, but we're printing the words, or that, and that's the iterator. But what is it iterating through? Spell list. Exactly. Why would it not print just this then? Oh, because this is inside the for loop? Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. So we're going to give spell list an argument. And what's that argument? The words. Words. Exactly. Very good. Close out our loop, and there you go. Thank you for joining my class today. I hope you enjoyed a little bit about what we do in web development and programming, and I hope to see some of you join us.